Uh, so she moved down to this area. Um, her husband died, or killed, was killed. So she, she moved down and married a Danish king, Neil. Um, Inge was the name of the king who was there, and then she moved down and married Neil. And um, she lived in Lund, which is in the southern part of Sweden today, along to Denmark. Then. And there in Lund, um, the king, of course, knew the archbishop, so they were good friends. And the archbishop was um, good friends with a, one of the most important persons in the medieval, high medieval uh, Jura, Bernard, Bernard of Terrell. And he was a part of of what is called a, a re the revival movement within the church during the 1100s. So he, the Archbishop in Denmark, was influenced by this revival movement, this historian movement. And and that key, well, uh, so the Queen, of course, met this Archbishop and was influenced by his spirituality and 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 so on. Unfortunately, her husband were, was killed in a battle, so she was a widow for the for a second time. So she moved up here and married a, a third king <laughs> in, uh, in this area. Uh, and and you know it was an old Swedish tradition, and still is in a certain circles that during the, the day after you got married, you the man is supposed to give the bride a, a gift. Mm -hmm. And he gave, he gave her a farm this area. And they started to live together, of course, and then she said, well, you know, I met those very, very spiritual people, those, those who were influenced by, by the distortion movement, and, and I really would like to bring that sort of spirituality, that faith, that sort of faith. I guess then, and the king said yes. So, so they said they sent signals. There are, we have letters. It said a pious queen of Sweden wants um, us to come up to the very north of, of, of Europe. Uh, so they sent uh, several monks, thirteen, most likely. They need to be thirteen, as you know, Jesus Christ and the twelve disciples. But it should be all of these circuit when they founded New Monster. But they split up when they came to Sweden and, and formed two different uh, monasteries. And that was 1143, 1143. And one uh, of them is this one, this one, Alvaslav. Mm -hmm. The other one is a little bit further south, two, other, two hours south. Mm -hmm. um, and they came from Clairvaux in France and they settled in. This is, of course, Alvaslav, of course. Farm was named Alvaslav. The other one was called Novo. And Savo means uh, clear valley, and that monster is called a new valley. So it's clear, a clear, um, clear, clearly in that tradition. So this was the 40th and 41st monastery founded from that monastery in Savo. So they spread all over Europe, and they, of course, they spread spirituality. They spread. Um, many, many things um, uh, connected to the Christian faith, but also uh, a broader culture. They, the way, uh, how, well, to write documents, actually, they brought here. Uh, before that, the Vikings said, well, we made this deal, and if you take my hand, so that's the deal. You know, <laughs> you know, writing for anything like that. But when the church came here, they said, well, they had a tradition of, of a written tradition in totally different ways. So they said, well, we need a paper. Because you might die. I don't know what your son will say. We need a paper. We need a paper so we know that you, we own the planet. So. so they started that tradition, literal tradition. And actually, in fact, the, the, the oldest Swedish library is right here, uh -huh. and it's, 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 it has a Latin name, uh, the, uh, which is the same name as we have in the English word arms. So it's, it's not, you know, uh, military arms, but it, it, it was connected to the spiritual arms, you know, the, the knowledge is, is a way of, of 
uh, well, it's, a, it's some sort of arms, you know, you use them all. So, so they brought uh, <coughs> more traditions. For example, they ha there is a pond over there, so they 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 didn't eat meat. They, they wanted to eat well, they ate fish. They ate, ate fish, but but otherwise they were vegetarian. So, so they brought that sort of culture and how to develop certain things, certain techniques, how to build. Uh, things they brought a lot of lot of things that made a foundation of what later became the the, the West, well the Swedish culture and they, they it was a clearly connection between Sweden then and the continent the Christian continent and the first Archbishop of Sweden came from this this monastery so 1164 we had a Swedish, well we had an Archbishop in Sweden but he was most likely from England. And the monks who, the, the one who led those monks up here from France was a person from, what is today, uh, Utrecht. So, so you had that part, further up. Uh, so you had people from, what is today, Belgium, Merso, Holland, uh, England, uh, France, and of course Swede, Swedes joined this. this uh, monster too. So you had it was clearly a very very international setting right here. And after a while, they actually owned 450 farms. So it became a powerful, a powerful place during the high mid well mid high medieval era. Uh, and and uh, of course they had a nice swimming pool right in here. <laughs> Yeah, and that's garden. So they actually brought herbs here to Sweden from the continent that we didn't have before. Uh, so they brought things, they brought culture, they brought in a very broad sense. Uh, and also, of course, their main thing was was uh, to bring the Christian religion. And their motto was pray and work. Oga et labora, pray and work. So they met in the church on a regular basis, at least, um, you know, seven times a day for prayer, short prayers or longer prayers. Um, uh, and and then they live here, and then they had what the monks lived here, and they met here to decide every single day, new decisions made. And here, um, over there, they had what is called lay brothers. Because they were they were, they were praying here, celebrating mass, etc., writing books, copying books, uh, preaching, uh, receiving people um, for for well different purposes. So the people that actually worked out told the other words of what to do were living. They had their kitchen here and so on. They also the abbots have the boss live here. <laughs> And then they had a guest house, and also connected to every single monastery, they had a, a small hospital. Mm -hmm. So, uh, according to the rules, they should be poor, and they should never ever say no to anyone who came as a guest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so uh, um, it was important. It was, it was in a very important place. Then, from 1143, when they came until the Reformation, when when uh, the new king, the Lutheran king, that we don't want in the monastery, for example. So they just closed it basically. It took a few years, but but um, that was during the early and mid 1500s in the process there. So so basically 1143, 12, 13, 14, a little bit more than 300 years. It's this is what yeah. we have today. Bus library.